Hi, my name is Jesse. I'm from PictureBandit.com and in this tutorial I'll be covering how to use plugins to paint a mesh with reference photos in ZBrush 3.1. I know that sounds a bit confusing but really it's not. So to begin with you're going to need a couple of free plugins from the uh, ZBrush website. The links should be posted on the right side of this video if you're viewing from YouTube which is what this video was made for. Um, the first one is called Image Plane and both of these can be picked up. I think both links are on the same page. The first one is called Image Plane and it can be found once you install it under Texture at the bottom. You click on the Image Plane tab and there you have the Image Plane options. And the second one is Z App Link and once it's installed under the document tab uh, you have a huge button right here that says the app link and we'll get into using both of these here in a minute the first one is image plane and uh, this is a really useful program or plugin for using uh, reference material to create heads and faces and just kinda anything if you draw some kind of creature and you wanted to throw it up on the background and use that as a reference to kind of uh, mold your model great it's perfect now this face I'm using is actually my face and it was created on um, face gen and I do have a, a video on how to do that and all I did uh, the face itself was cre created on face gen all I did was uh, imported into uh, ZBrush and I use these reference photos that I'm going to be using throughout this tutorial to kind of to kind of uh, mold the head uh, and the hair and the ears uh, to match the face. And uh, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we'll get into using image plane. Uh, first thing you want to come up here once you have your model or mesh or Z tool loaded on the screen and you are in edit mode, come up to texture, go down to image plane and click load image and conveniently it's already in the folder where I have my reference material I'm gonna go with the right side profile and load that up and uh, it kinda fits it on the screen you can zoom that in or out or however you want to do I'm gonna zoom it out a little bit and then the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to resize my model using the alt alt key and try to get my model aligned with my image now you can see I'm over the top of it I can't really see through it but there's an option for that if you go back up to texture and under image plane you see model opacity just bring that down a little bit and now I can see where I'm at and I'm just going to resize this down. I'm going to have to move it around a little bit. And this doesn't have to be perfect. By no means does this have to be perfect. This is just for reference. But basically, if if I was uh, referring to an image I could mold now begin to mold my object to match the photo that's loaded in the background and then once you're done with that while it's still in edit mode just hold down control and hit in and you can get rid of that and what I'm gonna do now is just bring my opacity back up and there you have it okay uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same reference photo to start painting onto my mesh. So that's where the Z app link plugin comes in to play. All you do is uh, while you're still in edit and draw mode, come up to document and click Z app link. And this is telling me, it's giving me a little warning. Uh, do you want to enable? polygon colorize yes I do uh, next thing you have some options here you can do double-sided fade the edges uh, enable perspective 
every time I do this, I keep it at fade the edges because I'm not always referencing a face. Maybe I'm just uh, using uh, some kind of other material. Maybe I'm trying to color col clothing and stuff like that. So I just leave it on fade and, I, and maybe every once in a while I'll do double sided. It depends on what I'm doing. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up your target application if it's your first time doing it. Now my target target application it, it automatically whenever you install it it'll try to find your target application uh, or it ask you to browse to it now I'm I just happen to be using Photoshop uh, CS4 but any any kind of photo editing software that works in layers this will work with it just fine so mine's automatically set up to Photoshop all you have to do is hit drop now it's gonna retrieve and open up your photo editing software and uh, and it's gonna open up the uh, the screen now I can't rotate this around all it did was drop it onto a flat surface and you'll see over here I have three layers so if you're uh, familiar with working with layers and whatever software that you have it's gonna give you three layers exact same way and what I'm going to do now is open up my reference material which is also in layers and I'm just gonna take the layer from my reference material and drag it over to the ZBrush screen and if I wanna kinda see where I'm at here I can just put that on top or however I want and uh, what I'm gonna do now is kinda I'm going to move my reference around And uh, you know there was one more step I knew I forgot, but we'll get it. We'll get to it here in a second. We're going to move my reference material around to where it uh, matches up to what I have on the screen here. Now, and what I'm doing here is I'm just looking at my ear. Now, what I can actually do because I'm in Photoshop, I can come up to Image, I mean uh, Edit, Transform and do warp and I can actually move bits and pieces around to make the stuff match up a little better so say I just pulled the head back to match the back uh, but I, I off-centered my ear so I can come grab right here and recenter my ear or whatever I wanted to do that and maybe I wanted to pull the forehead up so that it gets further up on the head there and then once I'm done I just hit yes okay um, so I have my reference material laid on top now I want to collapse just these two layers layer one and layer two uh, I'm going to hit control select the second layer and I'm just right clicking it and going down to merge layers I know it came off the screen but you're just gonna merge your layers however you merge it in whatever software package you have and then once you merge those two layers into one you need to make sure that your layer says layer one sometimes it defaults to layer two or whatever make sure it says layer one so now I have my Z shading my layer one which is where I put my reference material and then my fill shading um, as you can see both of these say do not edit and they're in locked I now have this save all I'm gonna do is uh, on this one you can see a little star saying it's not saved I'm gonna hit control s and save it or you could just come up to file and hit save. Once I save it, I'm just going to minimize this and I'm going to come back to my ZBrush screen and now it's asking me, hey, do you want to re-enter re ZBrush or do you want to go back to your external editor? I'm going to hit re-enter ZBrush. It's going to kind of give me a feel for what it's going to look like and if I look at it and I say, yeah, this looks pretty much lined up like how I wanted it, uh, you can hit pick up now. And it's going to drop that onto your thing. Uh, one thing I forgot to do is if you come down to your material, everything is red. If you come down to your material and you come over to Fast Shader, now we're cooking with fire because you can see what I've done here a little better. It's dropped it onto my face. Um, another thing that you should know is whenever you're painting like this with the app link, uh, the higher your geometry is, the better resolution you're going to get whenever you actually paint this stuff onto your 
mesh. So right now that was on a three resolution or, or, or three division. I'm going to divide this up a little more, uh, maybe up to five. And if you know anything about the ZBrush, or even if you don't, go over and check out my uh, ZBrush begin Beginners tutorial. And uh, this actually increases my total uh, polygon, polygon counts. And I'm up to 1.4 million right now. So that gives me more detail whenever I go to paint onto this mesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this around here. Uh, facing the other direction, I'm going to go back to Document. Hit Z App Link again go straight to drop now it's gonna open up all I'm gonna do is update my window then I'm gonna come back open left side let me just open up uh, left side reference material same thing I'm gonna drop drop the layer on top of it and then I'm going to move my layer around as you can see uh, Whenever I changed my material to a fast shader white, I can see what I'm doing a little better and get a better feel of how it's going to look. And I'm just going to resize this and kind of match it up to where I'm at. Maybe need to rotate it a little bit. And uh, don't be afraid to mess it up, you know. You can always go back and paint over these with other layers as you're going along, which is what I'm going to get into here in a minute details all right warp I just kind of wanted to move this ear down a little bit okay and then I'm going to merge the layers again merge layers rename this oops and I'm just double clicking that rename it back to layer one uh, control s and then minimize Re-enter ZBrush, and I like that. Pick up now. I got the fade turned on and everything. And then once that picks it up, you can see this side has a little more detail than this side. And now I'm going to come back and do my frontal. And the reason I'm doing the frontal last is because I want my fade lines to be on the side. And I can always go back in and bring this back into Photoshop and just kind of uh, erase those fade lines. So one more time, drop now. I'm going back into updating in Photoshop and I'm going to open my last reference photo and uh, drag that over. And just kind of resize that a little bit. It's making everything match up a little bit. However, and I think that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Merge my layers. Merge, merge layers. Rename this back to layer one. Very important step. You're going to get some kind of uh, errors if you don't do that. I'm going to hit Control S, save it, minimize my program, re-enter ZBrush. It's going to give me a kind of preview, pick up now, and boom. I've just painted a lot on this mesh. This, if I go back and drop now, if I go back to document the app link, I can go back into Photoshop and edit it just like a photo and just kind of uh, use my, my, um, one of my brushes to, to blend that in. Same thing over here. I can move it around. I can go back and do reference material for the back of the head. I can, uh, you know, if it was clothing, I can use reference material for the clothing. Well, anyway. That's, that's the, the concept, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, shoot me a message, and uh, as always, <laughs> I get back with most of my people that uh, subscribe to me. So, 
As you'll notice, uh, I now have a secure donation link set up through PayPal. And if that's something that you just can't do right now, don't even worry about it. My tutorials will always be free. With that in mind, I will be finishing up a complete series on ZBrush, and I plan on adding other series like 3D Studio Max, Maya, uh, Maya View, possibly Poser, and uh, how to work between all the different software packages. So if this is the sort of stuff that interests you, please subscribe. You won't be disappointed. And to my current subscribers, thank you. And don't forget to check out PictureBandit.com. Thanks.